Yes people, welcome back to another video. So, once again, a little something different. I gone and bought myself a book, The Calderdale Way. So this is gonna be my first sort of test when it comes to doing a bit of long distance hiking. The overall trail is not that long, it's 50 miles. But the amount I'm gonna do in a day is around 20. Depends how I feel, I could bail out at 15 miles in. But that's the target I've set myself for day one. Now I only live about a mile and a half away from a section of the Calderdale Way, and that is Stone Chair Shelf. So I thought I might as well begin the trail from my doorstep and set off from there. Add an extra three mile or so to the 50 miles, so shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Now the weather is not looking good. Forecast rain, so we'll have to see how we get on. I've got my waterproofs. I'll show you later, but I decided to ditch the pants. So I've not gone for normal trousers. I've just gone for shorts and leggings. Now I know I said that this trail is only like a mile and a half from my house, but I don't actually have a clue about any of the areas. I don't know Halifax that well. I don't know Calderdale that well. So I've not done any hiking around any of the places that I'm gonna to go to. So it should be a little adventure. I know it's not too far. Not too far out in wilderness, but we're getting out, that's what's important. And it's all good practice for those ones that are further afield. <coughs> yeah, well, first little dog attack at day. Right, so we're now bang on one hour into the trail and I've managed to do 3.4 miles. So that's good going, I'd say. Just passing the old white bear and we've hit Norwood Green. So I think the next stop is Bailiff Bridge. <laughs> We've only gone and found this first sign. Called it Elway. Oh mate, come on. What is this? Bailiff Bridge. See, I'm used to walking about like this in Lake District and obviously the remote areas. But on this trail, every now and then you've got to go through little villages and towns and whatever. And obviously people are looking like, what the f is this guy doing? So I'm about halfway to Brighouse from Bailiff Bridge now. I've just gone past Bumhall Farm. And one thing I do like about this trail is it's well signed. So as soon as you're about to go off course, and luckily a sign pops up to remind you which way to go. Every now and then I keep checking back on the map because if I miss a sign, then I'm knackered. Just seen a sign then, but it's for a different one. There's another trail around here and it's called Calderdale Summit or other. So I'll have to check that out, see what it is. So no, there's not another sign around here. That's the way I was supposed to go. So I'm banging on about how good the signs are and I'm ignoring them, walking straight past them, thinking it's for something else. So all these little extra bits that I'll add on to make this trail bloody 
twice as long as it normally is. I'll spin you around. This is the sign I'm looking for. Easy now. Hello. There we are. Hey, oh, TGM crew. Go on, lads. Brr. For about two and a half hours in now, just stopped off at my first place, which were the Pickle Bridge Sandwich Hut. Got my scent cheeky little cheese toasty for breakfast. It's not really had up today. And I also bought a nice bottle of fresh orange as well. So that'll go down a treat. This is us. Walking alongside the canal now for a couple miles from it. Pretty decent, I like it. Just seen a Renault 5. Right, so I started off up here somewhere. Worked my way down through Shelf to Stone Chair, and then I've come round to Norwood Green, down to Bailiff Bridge, and then along here, and that's where I got my sandwich, I think, something like that. And then I'm just working my way along here now, towards South Arham. That'll be a right gap next to this place. Just chilling in back garden. So then, welcome to Happy Valley. Calderdale takes its name from the river Calder and Dale, a word for valley. Located in the heart of the South Pennines, the Calderdale Way was devised in the early 1970s. Expect to be trekking through soggy bog-ridden moorland, well-trodded bridle paths and woodland which can quickly turn into built-up urban areas. Calderdale is a unique blend of town and countryside. The larger settlements squeeze sardine-like into the valley floor shared with rivers, canals, roads and railways. Higher up, rough pasture gives way to reveal open moorland and views across the valley. So thank you for joining me on this little mini adventure. I'm less than 10 miles in at the moment, but we're getting there. I hope that's not a blister I can feel. All right, the time is 20 to 12. We're 9.7 miles in and we just got to South Arab. So I'm feeling good so far. Legs are feeling fine, feet are feeling fine. Nearly 10 miles in. Let's keep going. Plenty of time yet today. Well, that's not really ideal, is it? No through route, but it doesn't give you any options or alternatives. I don't have a clue where I am, so I'm gonna have to carry on going, aren't I? I don't have no other option. Like a scenic walk, eh? So if I've not given it away already in the thumbnail, you might be wondering what tent I've brought with me tonight. And we are forecast some winds later, but it shouldn't be anything too crazy, really. Maximum of 30 mile per hour gusts. And the tent is the Nightcat Ultralight Backpacking Tent. It's the lightest tent I've got. It's the smallest tent I've got. So, that was the one that I decided to bring on this trip. Got to make a few sacrifices for longer distance hikes. And I didn't fancy carrying three kilos with black label solo and footprint and all that jazz. I've also sacrificed my bedding. I have brought bedding, geez. What I mean is I've brought my free season Alp Kit Pipe Dream 400 bag. It is getting quite cold on a night, but I think that bag should be fine down to zero degrees. And I've brought my down jacket and my down pants, so with them combined with that, I'll be more than warm enough. Just same again, I didn't want to bring that 1.4 kilo Rab Ascent 900. Instead, I've got my 800 gram 
pipe dream. So it makes sense. You've got to make a few sacrifices. Danger, sudden drop, danger, steep drop. All right. Right, so I've just got to a place called Ladstone Rock. Now, I did originally on the map put a question mark next to this place as a potential spot for a wild camp tonight, for night one, because I thought I'll ease myself into it for the first day. And this is at 15 and a half mile from where I set off this morning. But it's two o'clock, so we've got like three, four hours of daylight left. So I'm not wasting any time sitting about here. Because obviously I don't really want to put the tent up yet anyway. If it only been two o'clock. I've seen a few cyclists and dog walkers coming on here, so not ideal really unless it were getting dark. So I'm just gonna carry on. I've done about 36,000 steps, which could be a record for me, because normally I only do like 10, 15 miles or something at tops when I'm hiking could get to 20 mark, 20 mile at least. We'll have to see, I guess. There's a co-op at about 18 miles in, so I'm gonna pop in there and get filled up with liquids. I've still got about 500 mil in this one, 500 mil in this one. So I'm all right for water, I've got a litre. But I wouldn't mind a nice little drink of orange or something, or even a can of fizz, a bit of tango or something, you know what I mean? For a camp, treat myself, eh? Living it large. I recently seam sealed the nightcap tent because it's same as a lanshan, where I think you've got to seam seal the tie out points for the guy lines. So I've done that. So if it rains, with a little bit of luck, we can make it through the night. With a little bit of luck, we can make it through the night. Without getting wet. So I just met someone sat on a bench. Glad I didn't pitch up around here. <laughs> Do you know they asked me? Yeah, it's windy. Have you got any gin? Gin? Nah, mate. You got water? You got any gin? Nah, lad. Oh, lass. I don't know what it was. Oh, what's that? Oh, Teddy. Tezzers. Teddy's chocolate orange dark. Oh, bet that were nice whoever had that. Shame the litter doing it. Wankers. Oh, I bet they've got some nice grub in there for me. Whee! Quick pit stop at Rippenden Co-op. Got my son a banging sarna. Onion bhaji and mango chutney. Sounds cracking that, doesn't it? And then I got some little spicy chicken poppers. Little meal deal. Keep me going, won't it? Right, so here we are so far. I started there, shelf. I come round to Norwood Green, down to Bailiff Bridge and Brig House. And then I come round up to South Arum that were along the canal 
down there, down to Elland, well, more or less near Elland, along here, past Greetland, up to Norland, near where Sorby Bridge is, and then all the way down here to Rippenden. And then that's when I went to co-op, got stocked up, and then I just started walking up towards Soyland here, or Soyland, whatever it is. So I just stopped here to have some, have a break. I'm just gonna crack on, see how far we get around here. If I get anywhere near bloody all this lot, mankin holes, mankin holes, lum butts, buttholes. If get anywhere near buttholes, then yeah, we'll find somewhere to pitch. All right, that's usually the hardest bit getting going after having a break. Some old geezer passed me. Well, I passed him at the bottom of this hill. We were really, you know, kicking on a bit. And we were like proper slowly walking up this hill like this. I thought, fair play to him. I got halfway up, seen that bench. Stopped to have a dinner break. Sat there for 10 minutes. And then he passed me. He goes, tortoise in the air. He's gone now. I'm going to fly past him in a minute. I hope I'm smashing it up hills like this. At that age. I hope I'm about at that age whether I'm flying up hills or not. Right, I've seen a yellow sign and a footpath. I don't know if you can see him down there, but he ran his way back down him. Oh, CW, found our turning. Good timing. Sorted, yeah, that's our turning. Yeah, anyway, that old geese, <laughs> he must have got all the way to the top of the hill and turned back around, and then he passed me again. And then he goes, the tortoise one. about not much going on out here just a shitload of wind in the middle of nowhere now Fields and fields and fields, moorland. We're just about to hit the 21 mile mark. So I reckon three more mile, two or three more mile, and we'll call it a day and get pitched up. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not liking these little woodland areas with this wind. The quicker we get out of here, the better. Someone's had a right mare there, eh? Bottom of the shoe falling off. Right, people, I found a place to pitch. It's not ideal at all, to be honest, but I'm running out of daylight. There's a gate there, and a path there, and a path there, and a path up there. But I'll show you what I found. It's a nice bit of grass. It's a little bit of me, is this. You know what I'm saying? 
nice bit of fresh grass. In fact, this could be a path to be honest, but I can't see anyone coming out now at this time. Bloody hell, the steps there. So yeah, it's definitely a path. I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm definitely just gonna do a quick one this time. There it is. Not the best pitch. It's full of rock underneath this little bit of grass, so off to make do. I'm gonna try to find some rocks to put over pegs, but we're in anyway. We're in. Well, it's not a bad spot. I don't want to spend too much time outside tent and I won't be having many lights on in tent. So I want to keep it low key. Yeah, it's not a bad spot, all pitched up. Just been watching a bit of football. Timed that well, didn't I? <laughs> so I'm gonna get some hot food on soon. Can you even see me on this? I don't know, it's really dark. Right, so tonight's food is gonna be from Adventure Food. It's first time me trying this brand, but I've seen a lot of people trying this minced beef hot pot and they seem to rate it. So I'm just gonna have this before I go to bed. Warm me up a bit. I've put my boots there and my novice wild camper table just to block a bit of that wind because if you've got a lanshan you'll know that they have um, quite high sides up front where the doors are. So that'll be good for ventilation, for cooking. Obviously it's not good for wind. Well, that's doing that. I might as well show you where I got to today. So once again, started up near shelf, down to stone chair, followed it round, Norwood Green, Bailiff Bridge, Brig House, up to South Arham, down to West Vale, up towards Norland, down, all the way down here towards Rippenden, up to Soyland, up to Mill Bank, followed it all the way around to Crag Vale, and then, I'm not sure whereabouts we are from here. I think we're somewhere between Mankey Knolls and Lumbutts. Right, I've had my scran. It wasn't too bad, that minced beef hot pot. I'll probably get that one again, maybe. I've had worse anyway. So I think I'm going to go to sleep now because it's been a long old day. I've done plenty of miles. Most miles I've ever walked, probably, in one day. So, yeah, I need to get some rest because another big day tomorrow. So, I'll catch up with you in the morning. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Earn a bit. Well, morning, everyone. A fresh day today. We've got a little sunrise just popping over hill there. Tent's looking good. So, I'm in the Nightcat Ultralight Backpacking Tent. It's basically a Lanshan 1. Well, it is a Lanshan 1. It's branded as a Nightcat tent. So a really good quality. Stood up well last night. There were quite a few gusts coming in, but no, nah, I didn't phase it. What I do like to do, don't know how you can see it, I use my second trekking pole to lift that side up. And then that's where my head will be. So it just gives you that little bit more headroom because it is a small tent. It's a little one manner. But yeah, we've got a nice sunrise. Great morning. Feet are aching, I'll be honest. I've got a bloody Barry Lister size of bloody Barry Evans on back of my foot. So I'll have to see how I get on with that today. Fingers crossed though, we'll push through. Well, we are pushing through, there's no fingers crossed. We crack on. Oh man, that's sunrise. So today's plan, first stop for me, it's about three miles away and that's the Morrison's. So then I can top up and get some water and some juices and that. Might even get a little cheeky coffee and some breakfast. I'll see you when I get there. There's no rush. I'm just going to enjoy this sunrise as I pack this tent away. And then I'll be on my travels. Buzzing!
What a morning, eh? What a morning. Beautiful. Mankin Hulls is an old settlement and often a starting point for the popular trek up to Studley Pike. Home to an old manor house dating back to the 16th century, the Mankin Hulls Youth Hostel is often stayed in by people taking part in the Calderdale Way and Pennine Way. Lumbutz is an attractive settlement which nestles in a hollow below Mankin Holes. It is entirely dominated by a former water wheel tower that served a cotton mill that stood here. In the 1850s the mill employed about 100 work people, mainly school children and young women and the typical wages were 9 shillings. When the mill closed in 1926, 62 people were made redundant. Some of these were given work at other mills and the rest retired on pensions of a whopping 12 shillings a week. The mill is now demolished, but all that's left is the tower and chimney. So on the left up there, you've got Gadding's Dam. You can still see Studley Pike up at the top. That's the highest point round here by the looks of it. So we're not too far from this Moggies now. So yeah, I'm gonna get a fat breakfast, I think. Set me up for day. Probably going to be about nine o'clock by the time I get there. So I've got plenty of time today. Going to do another camp tonight, not sure where again. But well, we'll just take it as it comes. These descents are not ideal first thing on the morning. Oh, there's a car behind me. Move out of the Yeah, these descents. After doing like 28 mile yesterday, oh, the knees, the feeling it. Let me tell you now, this is how tight turns are around here. You've got to do a three point turn just to get around the corners. Fair play. Well, here we are in Tod Todmorden, is it? Todmorden? I don't know how you say it. But I've just seen the sign for Morrison's. I am buzzing. Banging breakfast, so just to start to the day you need. So I've bought a two litre bottle of water, so I'm just going to fill fill my front pouches up, and then I'll be good for the rest of the day. Then I think. Not going to lie, it's tempting. That's really not, but wouldn't mind a freshen up. That same t-shirt on for 30 miles. Weight saving, mate. Why would you bring a second t-shirt when you only need one? So I think we're just next to Todmorden Golf Course. So I remember at the start of this trip, there were them little Calderdale Way signs everywhere. But they're getting rarer and rarer now. I reckon they couldn't be asked by they got to this point. Although to be fair, if you do the route properly, I think I'm only on the first sort of section because I started it when I started it. I've done it sort of opposite way, but we're on the home stretch now, really. We're well past halfway. What's this par four shit? I don't understand golf, me. LGU six, 316 yards, par four. Bit of evidence that it's still a bit cold out. Nice block of snow still there.
Oh yeah, plenty of snow here. Look at this. Yeah, boy. Quick, take a picture for the gram thumbnail. Sub zero, minus 15,000 camping winter's night, snowy wild camp, solo. I could do with a horse for all these little bridle ways. I wonder if people do that, like horse camping. Cause you get like bike camping, don't you? Flying about on bike, park it up, camp for the night. Might be a niche there. Need to get an horse and do a bit of horse camping. Get to a spot, park it up for the night. Whatever you do with a horse. But yeah, crack on, following day, you get some right miles done, I bet. This might be a bit ambitious to say that I'm gonna get to the 44 mile mark today. Obviously not total today, I mean, from the full loop. That'd leave me about six mile left of the trail, but obviously I'm a, a mile and a half or something from my house. So it'd leave me about seven and a half mile, let's say, tomorrow. I'm also gonna have to look for a shop at some point. Whether that's gonna take me off of route, I don't know. Or even just a pub. Somewhere to get a nice drink that isn't water. Cause I ain't got any and I like to have a nice, I don't know, bottle of fresh orange or bottle of Diet Coke. Something for when I get back to the tent. You know what I'm saying? This has gotta be the shortest bridge I've ever seen. Right lads, come on, we've got a big job on today. Building this bridge. Done. Three footsteps. No, I mean, what were there that like they couldn't just put one stone in the middle of something? Step across. Crossing there, we're harder. Hey, I can see a sign. Called the Del Way sign. It's been a while. What's this centenary way with a yellow logo? Can't be having a rival trail. Confusing me. All my signs called the Del Way are all battered. Bloody fading. Look at this one. Someone's chewed half of it off and it's not even yellow anymore. Slacking. Tell you something, quality at gates and shit round here and doors and bloody... I don't know, just bits of scrap metal everywhere, man. Look at that. It's just tight bloody gates together with a load of barbed wire. That's your door. Ripping half your shit up as you're walking through. Well, if it works, it works. Someone's run me another bath, but I just don't fancy it at all. Come on, clear skies. Let's have a bit. Right animals around here. Now this on the map is called the Great Rock. And I can see why. Because it's a mean bit of rock, is that? Epic views now. Quick little map update. So this morning, we were about there. We followed it round to Mankin Holes, Lumbutts, where there was that mill. We went all the way around, had a breakfast down here in Todmorden, and then followed it up around here, all the way around. And then we're just there, just before Blackshaw Head. So if you think where we've come from, shelf, all the way around and down, all the way around here to there. So we're definitely through most of it now. I'm hoping to camp about here, maybe. And then tomorrow, pop round here and home. Easy, easy peasy. I've not even told you any information out of this book really, have I? I might as well just print it off a, 
A4 slice of paper with that map on it. But I might have a read, learn a bit more and put some little voiceover clips in if I can. I'll see if I can be asked. This is another one where you just felt you're walking through someone's bloody garden. Oh, cat tree house. Pretty cool. I like it. Sick. Look at these guys. I'm really liking this trail because it switches up. Obviously there's bits of road and that that you've got to walk on, but not too much. And then there's over the top in more land. You get nice and high, get some good views. And then you just drop into little woodlands like this. So a nice variety. So if you was to wild camp on this trip like I'm doing, you could plot your routes. So if you were more of a woodland camper, if that were your sort of thing, you could get in some of these woodlands for a camp. So there's plenty of options. Really, this last hour or so I've been moving fast. Why are you fucking coming fast? I had another lease of life in legs. So, best foot forward, racking these miles up. So we've got a few rivals now. So they got the Hebden Bridge Loop Pennine Way, decent in red. And you got just standard public bridal way there. And then we've got our faded sign that I think used to be yellow about five billion years ago. Calderdale way, I love it. But then it's these bits that are the slog. Just the steep tarmac roads. They're the worst. Tarmac's worse on the knees than that. Well, I say worse, it's better than all that bloody bog that we were in yesterday. But at least the bog's quite gentle on the old knees. Walk backwards for a mile or so. If someone sees you, they'll think you're a right knobhead, but it helps. <laughs> I love Mazda Bongos, me. Look at that. What a beast. I just stopped off at the smallest shop I've ever been in my life. I just stopped off at the smallest shop that I've ever been to in my life and I got a, another little bottle of fresh orange. I had to ask him to get me a can of coke out of the fridge because I couldn't fit through it, backpack on. That's how small the shop was.
I had to keep it real with you. Not moving fast now. This hill has been a right slog. Sun's out though. It just makes it that bit harder because of the heat. And with it being like a woodland, it's right close. And there's no wind still. As long as you keep moving, doesn't matter how fast, keep moving in the right direction and you'll get there eventually. So many ups and downs and ups and downs, that's all it is. Just down into one valley, back out, straight into another. Beautiful sunny clear skies now. Oh shit. Not over there it's not. I've actually heard thunder. I bet not be coming this way. But wind's picked up a bit up here. We're literally getting chased by dark clouds and thunder. So up there is a place called Tom Titty Man. We're about 40 miles in so far. And then we're just passing a place called Cock Hill in a minute. So interesting names. I don't know who Tom Titty Man is. Obviously a guy called Tom with tits. Someone tell me what they're called. Sound like R2D2. Oh, it sound this. Right, so we've just hit the 40 mile mark. I am buzzing with that. Made some real progress this last hour or two. So that up there is called Sheepstones. In the distance going forward is called Crow Hill. So we're gonna be going over there. And then about four mile or so away, I could be completely wrong, is Ogden. So I'm just gonna smash it out and then camp somewhere up there. Not actually go up to where Ogden water is, just a bit further down. Well, here I am at Crow Hill. It's not massive, but you get some decent little views. Now the actual path for the Calderdale Way is just at the side of it. But I thought I'll just come up to check out the views. I thought we were going to do I could hear a saxophone. There's three blokes up there rocking out in the middle of nowhere. Saxophones and shit. See if you can hear them in a minute. They're there, look. Right people, we've now entered a little woodland called Jerusalem Farm. Looks like there's loads of sort of pre-made fires and bits of wood gathered in piles and stuff. Here we are, look, Jerusalem Farm Local Nature Reserve. So there you go. Not bad. Right, so I've made it roughly to the area that I'm going to pitch tonight. It's going to be getting dark in the next half hour or so. So I'll just find a flat spot on here. And I'll get back to you when tents pitch. All set up, night cat looks like backpacking tent. It took some doing because the ground's really soft and muddy and boggy. So pegs kept pulling out as soon as I try to tighten it up. So it looks a bit weird. 
but it's up and it'll do the job. So that's where we are. Too cloudy for a sunset. But a lovely night. <laughs> Check what I've done. Yeah, boy. Oh, my days. Oh, it's red hot as well. Southern fried chicken strips wrap. That's what it's called. And this is just a garlic bread supreme. Garlic cheese pizza. Don't even need to get that cooker on. Just scran away with this. Oh, I am buzzing. Can I diet coke as well? Well, cheers. As you might be here, a bit of rain coming down now, but just that gentle rain that just helps you get off to sleep. Perfect. So what I did earlier with takeaway was well, went on Uber Eats and I just put in the location of like a farm down the road. There's a road back. It's about half a mile away, somewhat three quarters of a mile. I'm not sure how far to be honest, but I put that down, got ready and ran down there, waited for him. <laughs> so I'll catch up with you morning, peeps, because I need an early night tonight. It's about 10 o'clock now, alarm set for six, and I'll see you then. Morning, everybody. Here we are, day three, only six miles to go. Get in. So as you can see by the weather, it's really foggy. It's been raining most at night, so tent is piss wet through. So I thought I'll just whack waterproofs on for the start there. And then at least I don't have to mess about getting them out of my bag then. Now my blisters are absolutely killing this morning. I didn't realize how bad they were. I don't know if it's because I've just got up and I've not warmed up and that yet, but oh, it actually hurts to put my right foot on the ground. It's like I've got a blister across the base of my foot. Left foot's absolutely fine, so with trekking poles, take a bit of that weight off at right-hand side. I'll be absolutely fine. We've got six miles to do, so it's not too bad at all. So what I'm going to do now is get this tent packed away and then get out of here early. It's like I said earlier, or last night, sorry, I'm literally camped in a farmer's field and there is like a little road here for where, where tractors been flying up and down. And there's his wall. So I didn't fancy that this morning. I don't think Lanshan can take on tractor. Illiberg solo black label though, obviously it'd out, outdo a tractor. It definitely wouldn't be able to break that, impossible. But anyway, I've realized that I've got that bloody pizza box, I know. I've got pizza box and a box with chips and stuff in and there's bloody mayo everywhere and shit. So I've whacked that in a bin liner. Always take a spare bin liner. Even though I've not needed it the whole trip, it's coming handy on the third day. So I'm probably just going to carry that out to the side and then if I see a bin on the way out I'll just dash it in there, all good. Now I didn't realise this last night but there's still a lot of snow up here as well so it has been a cold one but last night I kept just in my long john pants which I've been hiking in and then I used my sleeping bag as just a quilt because it was really warm. Anyway, it's just chatting shit from me. I'll catch up with you when this tent's put away. And there we have it, people. Leave no trace. As always, no evidence that I have been here. Didn't realize how much sheep shite there were around here until it comes to packing tent away. Right, let's get this done. Not so fast this morning. And I've got that bloody cardboard box on that pizza in my bag and it's squeaking. Definitely gonna find a bin as soon as I can. I found a motor to drive home in, but I can't get it started. Don't know what's up with it. Right, 
All right, just coming up Crooked Lane and we've got a BD13 postcode. So I know I'm pretty close to home now. What a trip, honestly. Not the most pleasant part of the walk, it's a complete shit hole. Look at that. It's disgusting. So I'm now working my way through Shibden Valley. Now right opposite me, up there somewhere, is an old abandoned quarry where I've actually camped before. I think it was last summer with my mate Jack. So if you've not seen that video, make sure you check it out. But I've never been at this side of the valley. Only two miles to go. Yes. Taking a while though, this last mile or so. Because of all that sludge. Steady, steady. I don't mind it on the feet though, it's much easier to take than walking on that tarmac. Because there's been a lot of today that I've not filmed because there have been quite a few sections of road. So, a lot of traffic noise and all that jazz. Well, we've got exactly one mile to go till we get to Stoneshare Roundabout. And then that completes the trail, 50 miles. And judging by the time, I've done it in less than 50 hours. So 50 miles, 50 hours, that's not too bad, considering I've had two wild camps in there as well. In the summer, I reckon you could do this in two days, if you were really fit enough to do it. Oh, there's a bus coming up that cross road. I hope we're fit enough to do all again. Anyway. Yo. So in the summer, I reckon you could do it in two days because the only thing that stopped that from being possible for me was daylight and obviously with me setting up a tent and that you need to really be finding your spot while it's still light so we've been getting, been getting dark like quarter to six or something at six o'clock obviously in summer you'd have an extra three hours or so hiking so yeah, you could bash it out in two. But we're nearly there now. Can't wait to chill out when I get home. Well, I say chill out, I'm going out. We're jumping bath, relax for an hour, and then I'm off out with my pals. Having a football day. And that's watching it, not playing it. I right, bloody playing football today. Ah, I'll catch up with you when we get to Stone Chair. Well, here we have it, the middle of Stone Chair Roundabout. Calderdale Way, completed it, mate. 50 miles, just under 50 hours, 120,000 steps. Now, I hope you liked this one. If you did, make sure you give it a massive like for me. Share it on your socials. Drop a comment, let me know what you thought. And don't forget, if you haven't done already, make sure you subscribe. Right, thank you for watching. I've been Liam, you've been watching Good Block Outdoors, and I'll see you in the next one. See you in a bit.